Today we're going to be talking about how to find the vertex, axis, focus, directrix, and center of an ellipse, and then draw and label the graph of the ellipse. And in this particular problem, we've been given the equation 9x squared minus 18x plus 4y squared equals 27. At first glance, we don't even yet know that this is the equation of an ellipse. We really need to get it in standard form in order to determine that. The way that we're going to get it in standard form is by completing the square with respect to both x and y. So the first thing we want to do is isolate our x terms over here on the left hand side from our y terms. So we've got our x terms here together and our y term on its own. We've already got a perfect square on the y term, it's 2y because if we took 2y and squared it, we'd get 4y squared. So we've got a perfect square there. We only need to worry about the x terms here. And so the way that we'll complete the square, we'll first divide through this section here by 9 to remove the coefficient on the x squared term. And what we'll get is 9 times x squared minus 2x plus 4y squared equals 27. And now, We'll take the coefficient on our first degree x term, which in our case is negative 2. We'll divide negative 2 by 2 and we'll get negative 1. Then we'll square that value and we'll get positive 1. This is what we want to add to x squared minus 2x to complete the square. And that's just standard, this, this operation we just did here is standard practice for completing the square. So what we'll get is x squared minus 2x plus 1, the value we want to add, but we can't simply add 1 to our equation without affecting it, so we actually need to subtract 1 right after we add 1 so that we don't change the equation. And it's important that we add it inside our parentheses here because we have this 9 out in front as a coefficient. We need to put the negative 1 inside the parentheses as opposed to at the end of the left-hand side or over on the right-hand side as we would normally. So then we have 4y squared equals 27. Now we can take this first part here, x squared minus 2x plus 1, and factor it. So when we do, we'll get x minus 1 squared. That takes care of the x squared minus 2x plus 1, and then we have our minus 1 here. Now if we just distribute that 9 across whatever's inside our parentheses here, we get 9 times x minus 1 squared minus 9 plus 4y squared equals 27. Now if we add 9 to both sides to remove the constant over from the left hand side, we'll get plus 4y squared equals 36. Now notice that we have perfect squares for both x and y. What we want to do now, if we can, is just remove those constant coefficients on the x and y terms. So let's first divide through the entire equation by 9. We'll get x minus 1 squared plus 4y squared over 9 is equal to 4 because 36 divided by 9 is 4. Then we'll divide through both sides by 4 and we'll get x minus 1 squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 because the 4 will cancel with this 4 in the numerator of our y squared term here and on the right hand side we'll get 1 because we just divided 4 by 4. Now that we have our equation in standard form we can in fact see that it's the equation of an ellipse. The way that we know it's an equation of ellipse is because it's set equal to 1 because we have a plus sign here in the middle of our terms because we have a perfect square of our x term and our y term here in our numerator and we have these constant square terms in our denominator. One thing that we can look at here is a chart and this chart is available on my website. I have a chart for the ellipse, the hyperbola, and the parabola all on my website so you can compare them. But what you can see here is that the equation for the ellipse, whether the ellipse is tall or wide and whether it's centered at the origin or shifted, we can see the equation here. And notice that the equation for the ellipse, we always have an x squared term, a y squared term, over two squared terms in our denominators. We always have plus in the middle of them here and they're always set equal to one. So that's how we know we have the standard form of an ellipse. A hyperbola is the exact same thing except that we have a negative sign in between here. So you can always use this chart as a guide for finding vertex axis focus directrix and center. Asymptotes in the case of an ellipse aren't applicable but you do need to find asymptotes for a hyperbola. 
So one thing we can do right off the bat by comparing our equation to the chart is recognize that our ellipse is going to be shifted because we have x minus 1 here. Only when you have x squared and y squared in the numerator or x minus 0 and y minus 0 are you going to have an ellipse centered at the origin, which would put you either in this first row here or the third row. But in our case, our ellipse is shifted, so we need to be looking in the second row or the fourth row. Now it's just a matter of determining whether the constant in the denominator is greater for the y term or the x term. In our case, 9 is greater than 4, so the constant is greater with the y term. So we need to be looking for the case where a or a squared, the constant in the denominator, is with the y term. And that happens to be in this second row here. So we know that we have a tall shifted ellipse. If the constant were greater with the x term, we would know that we had a wide shifted ellipse. So all of our equations are going to be coming from the second row of this chart here because a is with the y term and a is greater than b. Now, there's lots of ways to work through this problem, but I think one of the easiest ways is to just identify the values of each of our variables and then plug them into the formulas we have here throughout the rest of the table. So for example, let's identify h and k and also a and b. We already know according to standard form that h is equal to 1, right? We have x minus h here, we have x minus 1 in our equation, we know that h is equal to 1. We also know in our equation that we have essentially y minus 0 squared, the quantity y minus 0. Well, that's y minus k, so we know that k is equal to 0. We also know that a squared is equal to 9 because a in this equation is with the y term here, and we have 9 in the denominator of our y term. So a squared is equal to 9, which means a is equal to positive or negative 3. We know that b squared is 4 because b squared is with our x term here, and we have 4 in the denominator of our x term. So b squared is equal to 4, b is going to be equal to positive or negative 2. Notice that we also have a value for c in the focus and directrix column. We need to calculate c based on a and b, and the way that we do that, we get c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So c squared equals a squared, which is 9, minus b squared, which is 4, so we see that c squared is equal to 5, and we know that c will be equal to positive or negative square root 5. Now we have all of the values we need, h, k, a, b, and c, to calculate all of the other values of the ellipse. And if we want to, we can switch out this chart for a picture of our ellipse. This is a picture of a tall shifted ellipse with all of the points labeled. And what we can do now is use our values here to identify the values of our ellipse. So the first thing we know is that our center is at hk. So the center of the ellipse is at hk, and we already know hk would be 1, 0. So 1, 0. The vertices of an ellipse are always identified along the long axis of the ellipse, so our vertices here are at h, k plus a and h, k minus a. You've also got minor vertices on the narrow axis here, which we can label as well, but we'll say we have vertices here, at least the major ones, at h, which we know is 1, comma, k plus a. Well, we know k is 0 and a is positive or negative 3. So we have 0 plus 3, which is just 3, or 1 comma 0 minus 3, or negative 3 here. We also have the minor vertices here at h minus b comma k and h plus b comma k. So we can say that the minor vertices are at h, which is 1, minus b, which is positive or negative 2. So we'll get 1 minus positive 2 is a negative 1 comma k, which we know is 0, or 1 minus negative 2, which is 1 plus 2. So that's 3 comma 0, because 0 is k. Now for our axes, we have the major axis which runs along the long side of the ellipse. So the major axis is going to be, in our case, the vertical axis since we have a tall ellipse. So we know the equation is going to be x equals h or just x equals 1. 
the minor axis runs along the short side of the ellipse, and we know that that's y equals k, or y equals 0 is the minor axis. To find foci, the foci of the ellipse, they're also going to be along the major axis, or in our case, the vertical axis of the ellipse. The foci are these points here, which are just shy of the vertices. We know that those points are h, which is, in our case, 1, comma, k plus c, and k minus c. So we have 0 for k, plus or minus the value here for c, so we're just going to have 1, comma, positive square root of 5, and 1, comma, negative square root of 5 for the foci. The directrix are these lines that run across the outside of the ellipse. When we have a tall ellipse, they're going to be y equals something. When we have a wide ellipse, they're going to be x equals something, and they're going to run along the outsides this way because they run perpendicular to the major axis. So the equation for a tall ellipse is y equals k plus a squared over c. So I'm going to say directrix at y equals k we know is 0, so then we just have a squared, which we know is 9, over c, so we're going to have 9 over square root 5, or in the opposite case at the bottom here, y equals 9 over negative square root 5. So now that we have all our pieces here, if we want to go ahead and sketch the graph of the ellipse, we can do so. We'll draw our xy coordinate system like this. And let's go ahead and mark off our axes. Let's call this 1, 2, and 3 with negative 1 here. And then 1, 2, and 3, and negative 1, 2, and 3. So now we have our center at 1, 0. So that's the point here. That's our center. We have major vertices here at 1, 3, and 1, negative 3. And then we have minor vertices at negative 1, 0, and 3, 0. So now if we want to draw the outside of the ellipse, we can just connect our major and minor vertices like this. Now we've got our major axis here at x equals 1. So we'll draw that line through x equals 1. And then we have our minor axis at y equals 0, which is just here along the x-axis. So there's our minor axis. Major runs along the long length of the ellipse. The minor axis runs along the short length of the ellipse. Then we have foci at 1 square root of 5. So those points are going to be right about here because square root of 5 is about 2.2. So we'll have foci here. And lastly, we'll have directrix, which will run perpendicular to our major axis right about here. 9 divided by square root of 5 is approximately 4.0 and a bunch of trailing decimals. So we can run that through the line about y equals 4 and about y equals negative 4. And we'd have our directrix here like this. And I'll leave you guys to drop each of these labels over the top of the graph. But basically, that's how you find the vertex axis focus directrix and center of an ellipse after you put it in standard form and then draw and label the graph. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.